Hello and welcome to the final free agent show for the 2017-2018 season. That is, unless we can persuade someone to get this series to go to seven games, which isn't <laughs> out of the question. We're going to do our best to do that tonight. Coming to you again live from the CMS Australasia warehouse. I can tell you tonight it's about seven degrees in here, so we're going to be talking to keep ourselves warm. Uh, by the way, you can keep uh, an eye on us on Facebook and Twitter at the Free Agents uh, TV. Feel free to drop us a line, and uh, if we feel like it, we might give you a shout-out. I'm Ed Wyatt, former point guard at Fort Vancouver High School. I know that is a very important thing out there for those of you. I've been asked to find a photo of myself, by the way. Not going to happen, guys. I think I was playing before uh, uh, film was actually invented, but <laughs> we'll do our best to do that. The guys who do most of the talking, however, let's meet them. To my left, uh, former Victoria Titan and, uh, Titan and columnist for uh, NBL.com.au, Liam Santa Maria. Liam, how are you? I'm good, Ed. Good to I'm see good. you. We're just... Uh... Just going to do the best we can. Yep. Tonight. You're looking good in the flannel shirt. That'll keep you warm here tonight. To his left, of course, uh, two-time title winner with the uh, Tigers and former captain of the Tigers, Tommy Greer. Tommy, good to see you. Good to be here. You're talking about a game seven. I tell you what, Larry's made, Larry Kelsey in the only of the leagues, made some pretty special things happen. I mean, mm -hmm. why not? Game <laughs> seven. Absolutely just right. Let's roll it out. Well, it is. We, we have. We've talked about this series. This is what most people would have wanted. Mm -hmm. The two best teams in a fifth and deciding game. It can't get much better than that, guys, can it? No. And we said coming in, hopefully it would play out this way. Yep. Uh, this is this game five. This is what this series, it's what this season mm. really deserves. It's not what Tommy picked. Get that right out <laughs> there. What did you and I say? Well, you said five. <laughs> yes. So you're, you're on the money yeah. if Melbourne wins. I said yeah. sort of four I or five. you guys kind of hedge yeah, bets a I lot hedged. of different directions. And I sort of really <laughs> made a stance. I made a stance on something. But your yeah. stance was wrong. <laughs> your stance <laughs> was wrong. We're going to point that out. But it is exciting yeah, because, it's boy, it's been an unbelievable series. The passion, the drama, yeah, the ebbs and flows, the adjustments. That really is the thing. It's not that it's just that it's gone the distance. Right. It's the fact that there is so much in it, you know. Soby gets ejected out of a game. Unreal. Joey Wright's not talking to the media <laughs> at all. You've got injuries to Boone. Yep. Potential injury to wear. All sorts of stuff, like Mitch Creek kicking little kids in faces. <laughs> oh, wow. All sorts of stuff going on. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well, listen, we're excited to talk about it. Before mm. we go any further and dive deeper into it, let's listen to what some of the uh, combatants had to say about it. Here, take a look. It's a five-game series, and we've got home court advantage. We're going home to try and win a championship at, at our place. Um, you know, it's been an absolutely amazing series. Um, you know, I'm sure game five is going to be amazing as well. Um, you know, two teams just, just going at it. And, um, you know, it's been a pleasure to be a part of it. I, I just can't wait. Game five in a grand final on your home court in front of 10,000 people, we'll, we'll take that. You know, now we've got to obviously head to Melbourne. It's going to be tough um, playing at their house. but. Um, you know, if we play our, our A game, we're confident we can go over there and get the win, so we'll just see what happens. So there we go, and I think the big thing there, of course, obviously, it's been a home court series, hasn't it? Yep. And, you know, you speak about the home court. We heard from Chris Golding there. That's the guy who is most looking forward to this situation. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. moment is built for Chris Golding. It really is. He talked about being a little bit nervous at the start of game one of the semifinals. He just wanted to kind of get that win under yeah. the belt for, for Melbourne United. But this situation... That Hisense Arena crowd yeah. eats out of the palm of his hand. And uh, this is the big moment. He's a big time player. Yeah, I can't agree with you anymore. And I remember talking to Chris Golden early days in his career. And he was playing in, it was one of the all-star games when the NBL used to have them. And I remember before he went out there, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for this. Like, I'm just going to go get it. Went mm -hmm. out, got buckets in that game. Pretty sure he was the MVP of that all-star game. He loves it. Yeah. When all the attention, all the lights are on, <laughs> this is when he does his thing. The other guy, of course, and, and this is one uh, before he came on for the show that you guys were adamant that we really needed to talk about, and that is Casper Ware. Mm -hmm. um, he is a guy that the spotlight is going to be on, has been on throughout the entire season, mm. and you guys think he's really, really crucial to this. Well, we said it before. I mean, I think he's the key to the series. I wrote about it today. I mean, Nathan Sobey's efforts on him in Game 4, sensational. Shorter and Ramon Moore also played some, some time on him, but... The adjustments, that, I think the main adjustments that have taken place during the series are around Casper Ware mm. and how Adelaide defend him. Yeah. And um, it's been toing and froing in terms of how that's gone. Certainly Adelaide got the advantage in that game for fighting over the top. We saw Casper Ware in that start of game three just coming off looking to attack, heading yeah. downhill yeah, yeah. off those early screens. 
it's an enthralling situation to watch how that plays out in game five. And, and it, that is really one of the keys for them because he's one of their main guys who get into the paint. So it, when he penetrates and Adelaide's defense has to collapse, then when, that's when Melbourne start getting those open looks on the perimeter. Mm. And you don't see the one of 15s that you see when they head, head over to Adelaide. Mm. Really opens things up for Melbourne. In the in the four, uh, the six wins that Melbourne has had over Adelaide this year, he's averaged 21 and a half yeah, points. That's... In the two losses to Adelaide, he's averaged less than 10. Wow. Yeah, that's a great stat. Very telling. Uh, interesting quote I read. Dean Vickerman said, "I've got to do a better job in coaching him." Mm. What do you think that means? Well, I mean, there was part. The rest of that quote, he was talking about minutes and uh, load. Okay. He said yeah, he felt managing. like he was getting yep. a little. A yep. little tired late in game four, he needs okay. to manage that load a little. Yep. But also, in adjustments, you know, I think in his head he, know, he knows they made a great adjustment in game three, Adelaide returned serve, and he needs to come up with a way to get him free off that on ball. It just bites but right into the way that Melbourne have gone through this series. Vickerman has been incredible, and the way Melbourne United have... I know it's, it's two all going back for a game five. Adelaide's been incredible. We'll talk about them more in a minute, but... They've just been so locked in. Even when the foul count was so lopsided in that game four, after it was in game two mm. over in Adelaide, Vickerman got asked at the half and he was like, yeah, I mean, they're getting rewarded because mm. they're attacking the paint. They're getting rewarded because they're pay playing a certain style of basketball. Mm. You know, the media, fans, Twitter, everyone blew up after game two about <laughs> how Adelaide was treated. Let me tell you, mm. they weren't treated any differently to how they've been treated mm. in Adelaide all year. That's how they play, and they get rewarded for playing that way. It's been, as you mentioned, the beauty of a series. You get the ups and downs, you get the drama. It's just been sensational. The Shannon Shorter, Casper Ware thing has been <laughs> a fascinating side, mm -hmm. uh, side show, mm. if you will. Um, what do we make of that one? Well, I liked Casper Ware's comments to hitch back to Shannon Shorter yeah. earlier in the week where he said, come guard me. You know, Nathan we'll, Sobey. We'll talk after yeah. that. We'll talk after that. <laughs> yeah. Nathan Sobey's yeah. the guy yeah. who's kind of on me most of the time. Mm. And then in Game Three, there were a couple of exciting moments mm. when Shorter was matched up on him. <laughs> the the, the Casper had ten happened. points in the first like minute <laughs> right. and a half. Yeah. Right. He just got buckets right great. at the start. And one huge three yeah. in Shorter's face yeah. down the stretch. It became a little mano a mano Absolutely. battle yeah. Absolutely. late in that fourth quarter, yeah. which I don't think helps Adelaide at all. No. What I love about Shannon Shorter is it's similar to what I was saying about Dean, but he just buys right into that Adelaide court. He doesn't care. Yeah. He knows Melbourne are going to boo him. Mm -hmm. He knows he's, he's walking off the court like this mm. at the end of game three. He wants more of it. The thing is, though, Melbourne have experience all season playing off Casper Ware. Yeah. Mm. You do your thing and we'll play off you. Adelaide don't do that with Shorter. That ball needs to move. So yep. if he gets caught up in that, I think that's advantage Melbourne. Speaking of the battle, uh, love this uh, from Chris uh, Golding about that. Let's take a look. He's my teammate. Um, he's a proven guy in the, in the world of basketball, not just the NBL. So we rock with him 100% every single day, game one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there we go. Golding, as you would expect, backing mm -hmm. up his teammate. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked a lot about Melbourne. Let's get into Adelaide a little bit because they've been sensational. We go back to yeah. game three. Uh, the Sobey situation was crazy, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I was watching that. i got to confess. I had a couple different TVs going, watching that on the <laughs> iPad. You had all the different I angles? I couldn't believe what was going on. I had to switch and get it on the big TV yeah. to watch it. Mm. That, was, that was serious drama. Mm. Yeah. And serious. I mean, we could sit here all night talking about all the different elements Where you got of to that be, call. Where you got to be? <laughs> <laughs> but what I find interesting about that situation is... Adelaide uh, walk that tightrope of high emotion. Yep. And it, yep. it, it helps every their game. Every minute they walk it. Every yeah. minute. Yeah. Yeah. Even every after play. the game, in the change rooms they together, walk they yeah. walk it, they yeah. talk it. It <laughs> gets <laughs> loud. I'm telling you. What do you okay. know about these well, changes? I'm just, I'm just, it, just, it gets loud. Know? It just gets loud this in there. This is why we're having this show, man. What do you know? What do you I'm got just saying, it changes? has gotten loud in that change room okay. at oh, times during the during the series. Okay. But it's they have to go right to that edge. Did Sobe go over that edge a little bit? Well, the guys were... Nose to nose, you got to yeah. stand up for yourself. What are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. Maybe you push with your hands. Is yeah. what you push Look, with. And, and you know, rule, rules are rules. You got to uh -huh. enforce them as mm. they are, as they're written. But when you see Prather's reaction to what Sobi did, it's not like he was like, oh, like, right. like he'd got mm. no. It just closed whopped. one of his eyes yeah, for like a he, moment. Yeah, like he got whapped in the face. And so, 
Look, for mine, um, I would love to have seen him stay in that game. But Can yeah, I maybe, ask you, uh, guys, you, you guys, maybe. Know, sorry to interrupt, when he came back on the floor, then they came and told him yeah. he was out. Was there a reason why that happened rather than yeah. going to halftime and say, you're not coming out, mate? The call was made on the floor to oh, qualifying okay. foul. Yep. They took the time during halftime yep. to review the footage. Got it. Why they, couldn't, taken their time. why they couldn't get to the change room and maybe Adelaide got out earlier. Okay, yep. I was Can you imagine walking into a Joey Wright change room? <laughs> well, that's and a really Joey good point. Hey, Joey? Who's Joey? Yeah, Who's that's Joey a really good that? point. I don't want that one. I think you've just you solved the mystery. Free throws have been huge, obviously, in their two wins. They've shot more than 40 free yes. throws. That's extraordinary. Well, it was record setting yeah. in yeah. game four. Yeah. 48 free throws. That's they incredible. made 35. Both of them grand final records in the, even in 48 minute NBL games, which mm. is incredible. Wow. 33 to 1 at halftime, Grizz. <laughs> what was your read on that? I think similar to game two. I know it, it's record breaking and you know, numbers can prove a lot of things. That's mm. why I don't like arguing with you. <laughs> but um, I, I really do put it down to the way Adelaide play. I mean, mm. Dean mm. Vickerman almost said it, almost said it for us at half time. Mm. I mentioned it earlier, but when he came out and said they're getting rewarded for the way they're playing, they, mm. they don't settle. You don't often see Adelaide settle for a little mid range two or something like that. They're always mm. attacking Attack. the basket. Yeah. And the only time they really struggle is when Melbourne's paint defense really shores up. And we saw a little bit of that in the fourth quarter where Melbourne started making that run and they mm. really tightened things up. But look, I just credit Adelaide. I think mm. that when they're at home, the crowd's behind them and they're up and about, they really yep. get downhill, get into that tempo of attacking the basket. And what I find interesting about that situation is two things. One, there's no rule that says the foul count or the free no. throw count needs to be even. Exactly. You know, it's if, it shouldn't be mm. even. Well. And especially if the styles these two teams yeah. play, Adelaide's going to shoot more free throws. It just happens. Yeah. What I find interesting as well is Dean Vickerman saying the problem was with our defence yeah. not being aggressive enough. Mm, right. We were getting foul after foul after foul because we were too passive. <laughs> and as a result, you're caught out of position and yeah. they're taking or advantage. Or help has to come over. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, we need to get up in, pressure the ball, be on the balls of our yeah, feet like and be more aggressive. So game five... Obviously, uh, we know Adelaide have the skill. We know Adelaide have the ability to get there. Yeah. They haven't been able to do it in the series here at High Sense. Do they have the composure? Can they keep it together? Because that's one of the things you brought mm. up initially, Liam, mm. when we first talked the, prior to the series, that they've tended to lose their cool a little mm. bit. Can they keep it? Well, we, we did, and they have through in the season, and particularly at High Sense Arena, yeah. right, where yeah. the, the atmosphere is against them. Yep. Let's be honest. Yep. And at, well, let's talk about this as mm. well. And I mean, Joey's been fined for comments about the league and how yep. it's structured and all yep. that sort of stuff. If you think that is not filtering through his team to how they behave when they're in Melbourne... That's a great point. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... I mean, they've played in Melbourne, what, four times this season? Adel uh, Joey Wright getting thrown out. Yep. One game finishing with Tex and Unsportsman likes, and then Sobe so, getting thrown out. Yeah. They need, and I, was, I spoke to a bunch of coaches just off the record uh, during, ahead of the series. What do you think? One word that kept coming up was composure. Is that right? They were saying right. Adelaide are so full of talent, and they are yeah. coming in with so much confidence and mm -hmm. aggression. If they can keep their composure, they could beat this team that everyone picked at the start of the season. Yeah. It's a tough a one, though, isn't it? Because mm. they're so good because they play with the biggest chip yep. on their shoulder mm. that you've ever seen. That's why they're so good. Yeah. And they feel like they're up against it even more. Yeah. And so I think that's what really sort of adds to that. Mm. That's a really good point. That leads into uh, last week, I should mention, we uh, started a new segment here. There was a demand <laughs> for it, people banging down the door saying, give Liam Santa Maria his own segment. <laughs> it's and back the, again. No, and then we did, and we got people banging down yeah. the door. Yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. Take, take it away. Take it away. Yeah, well, guess what? We're bucking the trend. We're bringing it back. We don't care what you're saying. Good point. Once again, <laughs> it is uh, Liam's segment. It is called a Lift. Mm. I'm getting on Joey Wright. I'm jumping on Joey Wright Ooh, for, for lift like this it. week. Ooh. And uh, look, I, I don't mind Joey's little protest. That he, I mean, not little, it was a big protest that he, no. that he brought into play for game three. He came in, he's not answering questions. He's saying, we'll do the best we can during the game. And then the post-game presser, he's saying, I'm not sure. Yeah. Cool. It, do we need to go on with it from here? I mean, this is the grand final series. Joey, I think the point's been made 
Let's get on with it. There's the, this series deserves to hear from Joey Wright. Do you know what? I, I, I can continue to stomach it during Game 5. At the end of Game 5, win uh-huh. or lose, uh-huh. you really hope that he has something to say, you know, and, and comes yeah. out. And no yeah. matter the result, yep. it's all done and dusted then. You know, it's time to, you know, represent yep. how you're supposed to represent to the media after that. Yeah, I kind of agree with Liam on this one as someone who's, like, tried to get quotes from coaches. You know how hard it is. We know how hard we're trying to get people interested in basketball. Mm-hmm. I get his point. It doesn't really do the game any good. He's kind of doing that Rasheed Wallace thing, isn't he, if I remember that? You, Both teams played hard. I'll yes. tell you what's yes. pretty interesting, though. I'll tell you what's pretty interesting. Yes. A character like Joey Wright snubbing the media. That's yeah. super interesting. I mean, this has been so entertaining to me. Yeah, cool. yeah, I don't disagree with that, but it would <laughs> yeah. be nice for him you don't to. Think so? uh, well, he needs We're talking well, about it right trying to, now. We're talking we need about it right stuff. now. But he is yeah. one of the best in yeah. the league yeah. at giving you something. And he's that's giving you something right now. No, he's giving you, like nothing. Giving he's you giving nothing. nothing. I just want to hear him weigh in on the yeah. on Turnbull, you know, on the election, the way oh, Pop do. weighs in on Trump, uh-huh. right? Okay. Maybe that's the next step for Joey I'm going to tell you, when Neroli Meadows asked him about his suit mm-hmm. and he said, we're you just going to do the best we can, <laughs> <laughs> that's possibly yeah. all-time yeah. best yeah. coaches. I will, say, I will say yeah. his discipline yeah. with the protest has True. been fantastic. Consistency, his composure. But let's, you know, for game five, and I agree with you, I like that. Yeah. Just post-game, game, game yeah. five, yep. when we wrap up I'll the series yeah. and you give tell us all yep. your feelings and thoughts. I'll right. give you that one. All right. Who's going to step up in this, guys? Is it going to be a superstar? Is it going to be a surprise? What do we think? Any thoughts? Well, I mean, the, the obvious ones are the superstars, and yeah. there's so many in this one. We spoke about Chris Golding earlier on, but he really does love the moment, and he's had a pretty good series. If he puts in Agreed. a big performance, good, ch- and Melbourne come away with a win, good chance to be looking at an MVP yep. trophy as well. Yep. Um, I think Mitch Creek is another potential to really change this mm-hmm. game. He has been the guy all season. I mean, he missed a little bit of time. But for Adelaide, who, when they needed something to happen, or you know, some sort of inspiration, he yeah. is that guy. And even in that game four, I mean, Melbourne made a real run at them. Great run. Mitch Creek had four fouls with pretty much the whole fourth quarter to play and played legitimate in-your-face <laughs> defense around the rim, got mm-hmm. post up three or four times, yeah. just played strong defensive rebounds. I think he's a guy who can really turn it. There are a couple of guys who are sort of trending upwards throughout the series. One of them is Casey Prather. Yeah. We're seeing yep. better and better p- performances from him throughout the series. He almost got them back he did. remarkably yeah. in yeah. that second half in game four. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts up his best performance of the series. Yeah. And if he does, call. they're going to be tough to stop. Another one is Nathan Sobey as yep. well. Obviously, he was tremendous in the first half of Game 3. He wasn't... He was having a shower in, in the second half. <laughs> yeah. But then I thought he was fantastic in Game 4. Yep. And he really kind of ran the show for them and was really aggressive. And, and then you look at some of the bolters. I mean, Majuk Deng. He's this is, been yeah. sensational. Wow. You were big on him last week. Yeah, right after your great. comments. Yeah. He just gave you the How big tip, did didn't he? Yeah. He just enjoyed yeah. a little bit of media yes. time. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Nice. yes. Well, he's just been unbelievable. Second year as a pro. Yeah. And he is in yeah. grand final MVP conversations. And, and on the flip side, the old man of David Barlow. It's yeah. been huge. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's hit some huge shots. And could we see another vintage, just Dave Anderson, sort of five or six minutes yeah. that could kind of swing the yeah. ball game? Yeah, Without Daniel a Johnson, doubt. I mean, we haven't even mentioned how no. good he's been. Talk yeah. about having a shower. He's been giving old Josh Boone a bath during mm-hmm. this entire series. He's been that good. Boone, good point on Boone. Yeah. He's, uh, we've got to think maybe the injury's holding him back, do we think? I don't know. Was well, he just not getting it done? Yeah, well, John Casey used the word impotent at one point. Wow. <laughs> to describe Jeez. Josh Boone. not coming after so him after the comment sure like that. I'm not sure if he was in the pregame wow. or where, where John Casey Jeez. was getting his info. Wow. But he certainly said he was impotent Jeez, at the offensive end. a little end. personal. I know. Um, <laughs> did you throw out fines for that one? Or was <laughs> Casey know. a fine? I don't know. <laughs> Casey can, we can't afford for him to start protesting. Wow. So true. leave Casey alone. Yeah, good point. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he has been... <laughs> Struggling a yeah. little bit, I think, and the back has probably something to do with it. Mm. One quick point upon DJ, though. He's going to really need to step up in Game 5 at the defensive end yeah. mm-hmm. because Melbourne are going to make it. Whatever their adjustment's going to be with Casper Ware, yeah. it's going to revolve around trying to get him mismatched on Daniel Johnson yeah. as often as possible. You're watching the free agents, Ed Wyatt, Liam Santa Maria, and Tommy Greer. Um, before we wrap this thing up, we had a few things to talk about. One of the things we 
all wanted to discuss with where is this going to sit maybe in these greatest grand final series? Mm -hmm. You know, we've all been around the game for a while. Um, are there any up? I, I would assume. Um, I haven't done my work, but I would assume that these are up. <laughs> this would be up there. Yes. This would be up there in the conversation. Well, this is the fourth game five deciding game. Wow. The fourth okay. in, in league history. Yep. Um, but like you said, I mean, it's not just about the fact that it's gone the distance, right? Yeah. It's the ebbs and the flows. We've had uh, a 16 deciding game three. So a lot of series have right. gone the distance. I go back to 1993. For me, I was, what, I was 12 at the time. So Drew? Watching Drewy and yeah. Copes and those guys playing yeah. against Perth. And the, you know the Gaze family pulling off their first title. That was a good one. You've yeah, been well, involved in some good ones. I was oh, going to yeah. say, well, quite selfishly, I mean, the two I've been involved in two of those game mm. five deciders: one win, one loss. Yeah. But obviously, the the win against Sydney, two thousand and eight, I think yeah. it was, and we lost game four at home. It's one of the series that are Great often series. spoken about because we were up so much. We we're planning our. I didn't play a lot in those games, but. We were planning our after party. We were up 16 points in the final quarter. Like, I was, I was ready to go, head of the social committee. And uh, I was going to take two weeks off. And we lost that game. Right. This is when Gorge mm. was running around the club. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. And yeah. then we went up to Sydney and shut him up. And, of course, the next year was the Dragons year that went five. And had mm -hmm. that, Which that, you were a part of. And that, I was. I was the yeah. media manager for the Dragons. But they had that. That, that was an ebb and flow. They, uh, you know, you guys won two at your place, yep. and then we won at High Sense, and that had the big Anstey, yep. Reese Carter, Mika Vacona incident. Which in is the really middle. similar to the series yeah. that we're seeing at the moment. It's a great you know, point. Not being able to yeah. win away mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 2004, right. West Sydney versus yep. Sydney. Right. West Sydney had it in game four, wasn't able to close out. Had it in game five. Sydney rattled off 18 unanswered points to come and claim I'm the I'm throwing title. the stat man under the bus on this one, but oh. he has called that as the greatest. All-time choke right. in NBL history. Choke. Absolutely. All-time choke. Wow. Well, one thing yeah. I want to see, I hopefully, is a good game. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. you know, it would be great if it were a good game rather than a blowout, but uh, we will see. If it does blow out, I mean, can you see oh. Adelaide blowing Melbourne out on their home floor? No. no. You, so you, the, you, it would be the other way. You could I see think. it the other way. Yeah. yeah. I'm just kind of thinking of that Dragons Tigers thing mm -hmm. and it kind of like dragged out and dragged probably for you guys to yeah. see and go, <laughs> get this <laughs> over with. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Sorry to bring that up, Tom. Thanks, Ed. Uh, a few pieces <laughs> Thanks, of man. news to get through. Uh, uh, also, off season, of course, and we're hoping to be back doing some of these shows through the off season. But uh, the Summer League. The Summer League is back, and I think we may see some guys heading over I there. I think it's mm. going to be stacked with mm. NBL players this year. I think last year uh, the, the NBA had got, gotten a taste of the NBL yeah. and Australian basketball. They ran a specific coaching course on Australian basketball over there. Every player we had over there got rave reviews. Yep. Coaches loved them. Um, and I think because of the work those players did, uh, more and more teams are going to be looking, and especially when you start to think about all of our coaches who are going over there and yeah. getting involved. Yeah. It's going to be a lot easier. That pathway is way easier than it's mm. ever been, and I think uh, we're going to have a stack of guys over there. Who did we see last year? Sobey and Creek. I yeah, know, well, right? let's talk about some of those yeah. guys we saw last year. Yep. Creek and Sobey, let's start with yep. them. Can you see both of them being back there this year? I can. Yeah. I'd love to see Sobey there because we weren't he didn't able to really see. Get a go. No, That's what he I had heard. his calf yeah. injury yep. Yep. and he wasn't able to kind of show his best. Love to see him there. Creek will definitely be there. Okay, a couple of younger guys. I mean, Joe Wright has a lot of connections. He manages to kind of put his guys in mm. front of the right people. Mm. Majuk Deng. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's been involved yeah. in a summer league before, didn't get much run with Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see him yep. back. Matt, Isaac Humphreys. Not in the NBL next season, we know that, but. Sydney Kings, we could see him there. Yep, He's got a great right. agent as well, so well connected, that mm, always helps. Indeed. What about a bunch of imports? We always say, can we see Casey Prather back there? Played for the Cavs last season yeah. and was really good. Dallas the year before okay. was really yep. good. Yep. And he's come here, he's improved his shot. Yep. He's shooting that three ball yeah, really well yeah. right now. Love to see him back there. Mm. I think a lot, a lot of the imports, the calibre of import we're getting out here at the moment, mm -hmm. I think yeah. uh, that they're all guys who are in that mix, really. I mean, Buford, I, I think Tokido, Trice, Conga, all these guys, even Cotton might be slightly getting past it. But yep. yeah. I think all of those guys are a good look. Uh, closer to home, off-season, uh, another thing, obviously, free agency. We saw the breakers. Uh, we talked last week about Paul Henry leaving, but uh, signed up Shea Ely and Tom 
Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. So that's a start. And then they got it. They actually were given a, 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 a jumper, a jersey to Barack Obama. Did yes. you see that? <laughs> yes. And Colin for LeBron. Starting their that, reactions. Barack could hit a nice little He's left-handed nice jumper. He's got a nice little lefty Would it be great to play he? a game? Could he play? Would Larry let him play a game? <laughs> it was. Worth asking the question. <laughs> but yeah, free agency. We're going yes. to see some more movement. Yeah. I find... Listen, we've got to put a coach in New Zealand and we've got to put a coach in Cairns. I always think it's a little shaky when the team gets put Start in place signing, without yeah. the coach having much of a say. Yep. So it'd be great to see a coach put in place. I don't know how close they are. <coughs> um, but, but they're good signings. And they're no, they're no brainers, though. <clears throat> I mean, Correct. I think, yeah. I think with Cairns more important than New Zealand who are so cemented and they, they sort of do look after their own and they try and keep that culture over there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I don't think that's really going to impact on the breakers keeping those sort of stalwarts of the yeah. system over there. Yeah, no, it's a really good From point. what I'm told, Daniel Johnson is the big domino to fall mm. straight after the championship okay. series. Right. As in every, I mean, he there's going to be a lot of good offers for him, yeah. and it's a guy firmly entrenched in that Adelaide organisation. But they're going to need to come to the party because yeah. there's going to be some good offers. And obviously, you got Cam Glidden and Mitch McCarron. Yep. Um, Mitch McCarron's team in Slovenia, I'm hearing, love, love him. him. Yeah. Really? Love him. Okay. So there's going to be a, have to be something good to mm. bring him back. Cam Glidden, there's obviously West, he's a Western Australian. There's a lot of talk about Perth, yeah. Brisbane with his connection to the Australian team. Throw New Zealand into that conversation as well of teams mm. that are pretty mm. interested okay. in Cam Glidden. Heard it here first. Nick Kay. Mitch yeah. McCarron. Yeah. Oh, I meant uh, not Mitch McCarron. Mitch Norton. Sorry, all the Mitches. Too many Mitches. Mm -hmm. Um, but all of those guys who are sort of floating around on that boomers yep. list uh, in, the, in those series, all of those guys are pretty much up in the air. Yep. One other name to throw out there, you talk about college guys coming back. They're always interesting. Yes. Jack McVeigh out of Nebraska. He's uh, got announced, he signed with an agent the other day. Okay. And uh, he's leaving after three years. Um, I think he's a guy that's going to be very quickly snapped up. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. Final thing, off-season. Uh, Three-on-three hustle. We've talked about that mm. before. We've got the resident star the over champ. here. He is the it's champ. Three, He's the it's, man. Actually, it's actually 3X3. Three 3X3. Three 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 three. Is it really yeah, called 3X3? Yeah, 3X3. Three three. Mm -hmm. really. three three. Three mm. I stand yeah, yeah. corrected. 3X3. <laughs> Apologies to all my friends out there in uh, Europe. Uh, who else do we want to see in this besides Tommy? Mm -hmm. I, tell you, I don't want to see do anyone see? else in this. I tell you, it's been so good. I just get to travel around. I'm winning all the money. Right. Like, no, it's, what do we, we don't need to do this. Yeah, Go well, on, I mean, man. guys are jumping on board. Cam Tregar, Anthony Petrie, I know, I Peter know. Crawford. He's a 3x3 veteran yeah, now. Right. We were supposed to go up and play right. in that one. I saw Trigger was playing. I was like, right. oh, well, right, there goes the money. <laughs> like, I'll save it. I mean, Anthony Petrie, he was just playing yeah. in the league yeah. this season. A couple of guys I'd like to see. Yeah. I want to see Shane Heal yeah. playing 3x3. Okay. Didn't he go and try out for, for the he big did. three? He did. Last yeah. year, got yeah, himself right. in shape. Yeah, He's that's been right. shooting the piss out of it mm. <laughs> in those yeah, pre game kind of yeah. shootouts. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see him out there. What about Homicide? Can we get Homicide to hang I around? I would like to. I would yeah. definitely like to get Homicide out on yeah. court. There's a three x three hustle in Melbourne this coming weekend. There's one in right. Sydney mm -hmm. uh, on Monday as well, I'm pretty sure. They're happening all over the place, so anyone can. Uh, Get out there and get involved. Oscar Foreman, I played against him over yes. in South Australia. He's already put on the jersey. Has he? But yeah, he played. Mm. Mm. And you know what? Yeah, yeah. You know what else about him? He's an ornament to the game. <laughs> he <is>. and <laughs> he sent me a tweet on that, you by like the way. That? Yeah. Do you, you want to know it? what he else did about like him? It. Uh, he lost. Ah, <laughs> to <we> you. <laughs> what about uh, yeah. you? The three of us against other uh, Ooh, shows. Oh, yeah. other shows. I like that. Can we do that? Against yeah. Other shows. Yeah. yeah, not against real players, but other shows that are on the air. Up against like Gardening Australia or something. I think we do all right. Okay. I think I we do that. all right. Um, um, well, one more yeah. name I want to throw out there. Yeah. Tamari Wigness. Oh, okay. Little young guy, little point guard out of Cairns. He's currently at, oh, in Canberra. Yes, I know who this kid is. The NBA is. Global yeah, yeah, Academy. Yeah. I saw him play a little 3x3 yes. last year. Yeah. Uh, not the hustle, but I, I'd love to see him in there against the big Did guys. Did you say Steve, Stephen Way? Stephen Stevie Way? Way. Croswell. All, the, all those sort of four... Guys, yeah, you know, retired guys. Yeah, Crossy would be That's good. Great there still go. playing Siebel. That's a great name. There we go. Good. All right, we're almost done. Before mm. we do, what happens on uh, Saturday? We'll start with you, Tom. Well, it's proven I've got no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> so uh, maybe just go to <laughs> get what, what, what do you think is going to happen? What do you uh, think? I think uh, it's just going to be a continuation of, of what we're seeing. Yeah. I think that um, Adelaide are going to give them their best shot, but Melbourne at home, they're a different beast. They're going to be in front of 
10, yep. 11,000 uh, crazy Melbournians who are so hungry yep. for a championship back in the, yep. the home of basketball, Victoria. Uh, and I think that uh, they're just going to shore up their defence, uh, they're going to rebound better, and their shots fall at home. Yeah, I feel the same. I think Melbourne at home, but I think it's going to go right down to the wire. Right. I, could, mm. I, I, I can see it going similar to Game 3, where Adelaide are right there within punching distance yep. in that final minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm much like Tommy. I think uh, Melbourne takes it uh, relatively easily. I think the shots mm. fall, they get the calls, the crowd goes nuts, and they'll, they'll win it. What about, what about fireworks? Are we getting any fireworks? Game five? <laughs> Everything's what on the line, turn, right? What if it turns a little bit, though? What if Melbourne get up 15 with... You know, five, six minutes to go. How wild does this thing get? It has the potential to boil over, yeah, doesn't a good it? Point. In fact, we talk yeah, about the players right. in the lead up. I, think it I could reckon get wild. that officiating crew yeah. will be so Ooh. nervous this <laughs> week <laughs> in the lead up. It's a very I think good they point. should cage up, just cage up around the side cage, of the court cage for the safety. Court. You know, wow. Melbourne, like the you're going to rush the court. Right you're planning on rushing the court. I'm not going to rush wow. it, but I tell you, there's some people there that will. Yeah, oh, yes. You're probably right. There's some, people, right sit court there's side? some people in the front row <laughs> yeah, I know. who yeah. are copying <laughs> kicks to the head. <laughs> <laughs> broken noses. That's a game up close, happening. isn't it? That's a great game. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen. It's great to have a game five. Uh, Liam Santa Maria, thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Continue your good work uh, typing away on uh, nbl.com.au. We've enjoyed to the best reading it. Yeah, you've done very, Just very to well. The best we can. Tommy as well. Great to see you. Thanks for being Thanks, part man. of this. Good really on appreciate you. it. This has been the Free Agents. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.